ठाकुर जो राज्यसभा का सदस्य निर्वाचित हुआ हूँ ईश्वर की शपथ लेता हूँ कि मैं विधि द्वारा स्थापित भारत के संविधान के प्रति सच्ची श्रद्धा और निष्ठा रखूँगा मैं भारत की प्रभुता और अखंडता अक्षुण रखूँगा तथा जिस पद को मैं ग्रहण करने वाला हूँ उसके कर्तव्यों का श्रद्धापूर्वक निर्वहन करूँगा विश्लेषण तथ्यों पर हो रहा है और उसके उपरांत ये भारत सरकार ने निर्णय किया है कि अनिवार्यता वही है गो बैक टू द बेसिक फिर से एक बार तीन निगमों को एक करके पूर्वरत स्थिति की जाए और उसी दिशा में हम बढ़ रहे हैं एक सोए हुए भारत को संगठित करते हुए दोनों हाथ उठा के कर्तव्य पथ पे दौड़ाते हुए विजय पथ की यात्रा पे 2014 के बाद भारत के यशस्वी आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री लेके चले हैं ये महत्व है 2014 का मिस्टर विवेक ठाकुर वेलकम सन सर टीवी एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस सो सिंस वी आर हियर टू स्क्रिप्ट योर पॉलिटिकल एंड पार्लियामेंट्री लाइफ लेट्स टेक यू बैक टू बिहार यू स्टार्टेड पॉलिटिक्स as in political science student you studied law so from studying political science and law to being a politician and the law maker take us through your journey and how did this political journey begin i also did my management from iift delhi so yes you're right uh, from a normal uh, thinking person it's a very uh, tangential uh, path that uh, i chose but um, after doing my management i started my work on my own and uh, i went into um, agri exports and it was quite an adventure and an experience because uh, that was the time india was trying to enter the uh, fresh fruit and horticulture and floriculture market so uh, we ch- government of india prioritized a fruit called lychees which is very popular and uh, it in india the produce comes at a time when international market is absolutely dry so the government of india took it as a thrust area and i was absolutely a young guy and then i was uh, inspired by mr pranab mukherjee that time he was the uh, deputy chairman of the planning commission and later on became the commerce minister also so i had an interaction with him and he said that uh, why don't you get into this this is something very new that uh, uh, we are uh, thinking of doing for india and of coming from a state like bihar if successful then it could be something very big yeah. right so, so that sounded very interesting and challenging for me and uh, i originally hailed from the district which is the hub center of uh, lychee production which is muzaffarpur yeah. so then all uh, companies came arvin mills came Go- godrej uh, came and then a, a group was formed jct in those days was there then uh, we started working then foreign consultants came and we were success the effort was on to export fresh lychees from 1960s but uh, it was all an effort in vain so we tried we learned the technology we went to madagascar and then we learned the technology from there came back applied it here and we were successfully able to ship uh, consignments to european market keeping the fresh produce fresh for 45 days okay but those were very dark days of bihar you talking about which period i would say um, early 90s okay uh, that way so nobody understood the gravity of what we were trying to work upon it could have been a game changer for a agri state like bihar but uh, the reefer trucks because cool temperature is to be maintained in all uh, you know fresh produce once you set a particular temperature of the fruit or the flower that cool chain as it is called is to be maintained till the market yeah that's right but unfor- unfortunately the scene that was there uh, the reefer trucks used to be held up by cops asking for money and bribe by the cops by the cops on the streets as they were used to chungi and hafta collections okay. 
Okay. So those very difficult times. That's the time for the first time your green corridor was set up at Delhi airport. So that such uh, consignment straight away enter into the custom area and they used to be airlifted. So we were successful in uh, giving shape to the uh, whole exercise. And uh, for that I was invited to address in the US uh, Agriculture Congress in San Diego, which was organized by USAID. And uh, the whole effort was picked up by USAID and uh, I had the privilege of uh, uh, being there and uh, uh, presenting a paper there. So those were very good experiences. Subsequent to that, I started my journey into politics as a young activist. Uh, I was quite keen when I was studying in Delhi University as well. I was a uh, socially an active person. And then uh, from Vidarthi Parishad to BJYM, which is the youth wing of the BJP. So that intrigues me to ask you, why the Bharatiya Janata Party? Well, I was always, uh, you know, um, quite motivated by the whole thought process, the thinking, the ideology, the vision that the founders of BJP or the original thinkers had about an India that could be. So, uh, whether, uh, see, there was, uh, if you look at it uh, logically, what Pandit Dindayal Upadhyay wrote about the, what the economics of the country ought to be okay. in those days. Okay. A pure visualization and uh, something that was written in s at a period when you couldn't have imagined. But he wrote so extensively about India that should be. That was quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Similarly, who were the sources of inspiration? Swami Vivekananda. So, the whole thing was quite an appealing thing for all youngsters in those days and when we were studying in Delhi University. ABVP used to sweep all the entire polls yes. Yes. and uh, we were nowhere in the government or as far as houses are concerned. It was a very small party. But uh, that's how the journey started. Then I started my work from Patna Town Committee, Achha. which is the basic thing. Okay. As an ordinary worker, then I went in on to the state youth politics, then became the state vice president. And those were very difficult times. One of the great founders of BJP in those days, I had the privilege of working under them, uh, late Kalashpati Mishra, okay. uh, like Kushabhav Thakare, Kalashpati Mishra. These were the founders who laid the pillars of what we see the BJP today. That's true. That's true. So those were very interesting days of life. And this is how I then I went on to become the uh, member of the national executive of the BJP Youth Wing. When Mr. Dharmen Pradhan was the national president, so I worked with him. Then I became the national vice president myself. I was in charge of Gujarat, Bengal, and uh, Guj uh, Himachal. Okay. So I grew up organizationally. It's been two decades plus now. So the journey has been interesting. Now, wherever there is work, party census, we go as a worker. At the end of the day, every BJP person is worker to the core. That's true. That's true. Absolutely, sir. So from those interesting days in Patna to allow me to say more interesting days in Delhi, in Parliament of India, take me through that journey. Do you remember that one phone call that told you that you are entering the upper house of Indian Parliament? I, I have been, uh, I have contested the assembly election also. I lost it. I was aspiring for a particular seat somehow twice, once in assembly and once in Lok Sabha. And twice it so happened at the last minute, it went to the alliance partner. So it was quite a setback for a long time. But the, the beauty of my party is that it keeps a watch on its workers, efforts, their work, their aspirations, their prospects, and the party takes care of it. Despite the setback that I referred just now, yes, sir. there was always at the back of the mind of the leadership that we have to do something about this worker. So I was uh, 
sent to the legislative council but my assembly seat that i was aspiring for went to an alliance partner similarly uh, when the lok sabha came my seat it was a jansang kal seat we used to when three seats used to be one that was one of it and it went for the first time to an alliance partner so which seat are we talking about we are talking about nawada okay lok sabha lok sabha yeah so when uh, Jansang used to contest on a symbol of dia so those were the days that nawada used to be won it used to be a reserve constituency it opened up in 2009 so but the leadership always had it in mind and uh, that's how i am here i'm thankful to the honorable prime minister and my central leadership that they brought me here in 2020 and uh, so far it's been a great learning experience of life So you've been uh, very, very vocal about several issues of uh, Bihar, the textile workers particularly. Upper House being the Council of States, what are the specific issues that you've raised on the floor of the House, articulating the aspirations of your people? See, I have a tendency. I am hugely connected with a com- with a common person of my state. Yes. So there are two, three very basic things about me. and uh, which is that i am very easily accessible to people and bihar is a very poor state deprived on many situations and many fronts and people are struggling for basic all the time so their aspiration is not very big but there it's a very emotional state people are very emotional so being connected with them i have all whenever i go into masses the issues that they want me to raise i study it carefully and then i try and raise it here for example the last example that i can give you is in the district of muzaffarpur the pradhan mantri gramin awas yojana the app related to it was opened for common people to apply or the mechanism that works within it now the coincidence is that the app was to be open for a fixed number of days okay and that is the time in muzaffarpur the concerned department workers went on a strike okay and despite the app being open the entry could not happen and the district people got deprived of it by the time the strike got over the app got closed okay so if there are 2 lakhs application first two days say 10000 entry was done yes and the lakhs and lakhs who could have been a beneficiary but because of the strike of the workers of the concerned department they are continue to be deprived so when i went there all public representatives of the panchayat they came to me and they said must, must be raised don't nobody is understanding the gravity of it right and that's what i raised it here in the parliament also so similarly a uh, post covid a huge maintenance work of railway started and a lot of halts of, uh, of various trains were stopped at various uh, junctions or stations as you may say right now people were used to for 40 50 years boarding a train from a uh, their uh, native station in rural areas right and they just overnight got deprived so there was a lot of hue and cry at various places that i used to visit so i raised it here uh, met the honorable railway ministers and apprised them of the situation and they were considerate enough to work on it and explain to me the reason behind it you won't believe it what i gathered as i said that the experience has been really nice that the track based maintenance certain parts certain parts had to be changed every 10 years but it was almost 30 35 years that the same was not changed and that work that work uh, started during the covid times and virtually pan india 10000 such stations were impacted and what was to be done every 8 to 10 years was not done for 30 years and that all started at that time and that was the reason why it as the work progress lot of stations again came uh, into functioning right so 
So, a lot of common issues is what I raise about the people that touches their lives. Let's talk about a very important parliamentary forum, which is, of course, the parliamentary committees. Now, you're heading the committee on education, women and children, youth and sports. So, what are the important reports that you've tabled on the floor of the house? And tell us about the deliberations within the committee because it has been oft repeated that parliamentary committees are extremely important and the committees perhaps need to reach out to people. Yes, that's right. See, um, earlier I was a member of the Standing Committee on Labour uh, and Textiles, uh, Skill Development as well. So, I had the privilege of learning a lot about these things. Then I was made the chairman last year of the Standing Committee that you referred about. And uh, it has been a great experience that uh, new education policy has come all at a time when I'm exactly. the chairman. Exactly. And uh, it's a transformational decision that the government has taken. And gearing up of the nation for 100 years in terms of education. And it's a complete, you know, upside down decision taken in the educational sector, absolutely in sync with contemporary times and with the, uh, uh, the future in mind that could be. Right. You, uh, we couldn't have imagined, although I've passed out from Delhi University, that there could be one can take two admissions. That's right. So, you are from LSR, as you said. Yes, sir. I know of a friend of mine, his daughter, he uh, took admission in uh, LSR last year. Is doing economics from there and is a student of St. Stephen's also doing some language there. So, this is a, a new education policy. We could have never imagined that. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, you can just pursue your passion. So, related to that, to promote that, we've had many deliberations, many meetings, Pan India, and just to gear up the entire education sector for this transformational change that is going to come about. So, we focused on that through our meetings and uh, fortunately things are shaping up. Then we duly analyzed the COVID time, the learning gaps that took place and how to overcome those learning gaps. Then in the action taken report that we submitted uh, last, uh, we talked about the 32 odd uh, uh, D2H channels and all. Yeah. And then uh, making public Wi-Fi absolutely accessible to the rural people, Pan-India basically. Uh, getting access to, easy access to education is what we focused in our ATR through the Bharat Net. And a lot of things have been adopted by the ministries also and they are working on it. Absolutely, sir. But uh, before I wrap up this conversation, yes. sir, as a representative of the people of your state, the people of this country. Right. So, going ahead, what are your priorities, the issues that you plan to raise on the floor of the house? See, um, there are a lot of things that uh, I have in mind and uh, the coincidence is that I have a few days to submit my demands for grants report. That's right, sir. So, I can't share it with you today. Yes, sir. And uh, maybe I would be in a better position upon uh, laying it on the floor of the house, table right, of sir. that, right. while I, when I table it. But all I can say is that, uh, yes, this last eight, nine years is a, a period of tremendous effort of the government in basically transforming India on all fronts. See, it is a government that has done real-time multitasking, as you may say, not leaving any sector untouched. And creation of new sectors which were contemporary and relevant, which did not exist. There was right. nothing like a skill development. That's what true. was the relevance of it? Nobody, we didn't know about it. That's true. India becoming an, an exporter of armaments and in defense sector and that to mi missiles. Now, 
India is a big time exporter of uh, defense uh, sector uh, yes. products. Yes. So, there are a lot of things which is makes one proud today, the way the country is shaping up. And in, in these difficult times, the experience of COVID and related things, I think has made every Indian a much matured person that he could have been minus a COVID. That's true. So, I think uh, it's been a great experience. Now, today, the world understands the relevance of an interdependent economy, which we didn't know leading a day-to-day -day life. Now, this is post-Ukraine war. Yes. So, all in a span of three years, the experience of every Indian, see, all over the world, but those uh, countries, Europe and all others, were very... Uh, in a different league altogether. Right. The size of our country, keeping everything intact, yet moving forward, this whole blend and approach and never losing hope and never losing sight of the objective, that's been a great experience. And anything related to that that I can contribute and do, will continue to do so. Absolutely, sir. Fantastic talking to you. Fantastic knowing about your parliamentary and political journey. And all the best for all your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Pleasure being here. Well, viewers, that's all we had for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Goodbye for now from my side.